Hello there. Welcome to my review of episode 6 of season 1 of Columbo, Short Fuse. First broadcast on, 19, on the 19th of January 1972 on NBC. It was written by returning writer Jackson Gillis, based on a story by Lester and Tina Pine. Lester and Tina Pine were a husband and wife writing duo who wrote for several TV shows together beginning in the 60s before later marrying, including Poppy, All in the Family, I Spy, and of course contributing this story to returning Columbo writer Jackson Gillis. Lester was born on the 5th of December 1917 in Chicago and began his career as a comedian before turning his hands to screenwriting. He died on August the 11th, 2001. He was 83. Tina was born Tina Rome in New York on January the 31st, 1923 and began her career as an actor with a few small roles before switching to writing. She died November 3rd, 1998. She was 75. The episode was directed by Edward M. Abrams. Abrams was born on the 6th of May 1935 in Los Angeles and was primarily an award-winning editor, but also directed on a variety of TV shows, including Alias Smith & Jones, Night Gallery, Murder, She Wrote, Columbo, and the non-canonical spin-off, Mrs. Columbo. Abrams died of heart failure on February the 13th, 2018. He was 82. The episode begins with a man in a photography darkroom making a chemical explosive in a cigar box. He is playboy executive of Stanford Chemicals, Roger Stanford, played by Roddy McDowell. McDowell was born on the 17th of September 1928 in Herne Hill, London, and began his career as a child model when he was just a baby. He started appearing in films as a child actor from the age of 10, with several British film credits under his belt before his family emigrated to the US in 1940. He quickly picked up his career and appeared in How Green Was My Valley in 1941, followed by starring roles in My Friend Flicker and Lassie Come Home. After success in the theatre and signing up to appear in low-budget films for monogram pictures, he moved to New York to concentrate on his stage work and moved into television as well. He returned to Hollywood in the 60s and his star continued to rise. Then in 1968 took on his most memorable role in the film Planet of the Apes as Cornelius and the heavy makeup, along with suitable for framing actress Kim Hunter. He would return to the series playing other ape characters on several occasions, as well as on the TV spin off series. He would continue in film and television throughout the 60s and 70s, appearing in Adam West's Batman, uh, Wonder Woman, Buck Rogers, Funny Lady bed knobs and broomsticks and of course Columbo as well as dozens of others. He showed no signs of slowing down in the 80s and 90s with appearances in Murder She Wrote, Fantasy Island, Quantum Leap as well as a very memorable performance in the film Fright Night as horror host Peter Vincent. He also moved into voice acting including returning to Gotham City in Batman the Animated Series as the Mad Hatter. He was also an accomplished photographer, publishing several books of his photos of his celebrity friends. McDowell died of pancreatic cancer on the 3rd of June 1998. He was 70. Roger visits the offices of Stamford Chemicals, which, despite having his name on it, is run by his uncle, David L. Buckner. 
he causes mayhem with silly string before being ushered into his uncle's reception room by DL's secretary, Valerie Bishop. He fusses over his uncle's plans and notices Valerie has forgotten to pack a box of DL cigars for his upcoming trip, giving Roger a perfect excuse to steal DL's cigar case and hide it. He then joins his uncle and his uncle's chauffeur slash private eye, Quincy. DL wants Roger to agree to approve the sale of the company and uses dirt Quincy has dug up to blackmail Roger into agreeing, as well as informing his aunt, who has the controlling stock in the company, and convincing her to also agree to the sale. Roger adamantly opposes his family's company being sold off, but DL has his back against the wall. DL Buckner is played by James Gregory. Gregory was born on December the 23rd, 1911, in New York. He briefly worked on Wall Street before becoming a professional actor in 1935. He worked on Broadway before serving three years in the army during World War II. After the war, he began working in radio, television and film, starring in the show The Lawless Years as well as regular roles in Barney Miller and Detective School, and guest spots on everything from Gunsmoke to M.A.S.H. to Star Trek. In film, he appeared in The Sons of Katie Elder, The Elvis Vehicle Clambake, and The Manchurian Candidate, as well as Beneath the Planet of the Apes, one of the few ape films Roddy McDowell wasn't in. He died September the 16th, 2002. He was 90. Roger switches the cigar box with his explosive one and the trap is set. That night, as Roger parties with Valerie, the secretary, his uncle makes his way to their mountain retreat and unwillingly sets off the bomb. We have a somewhat sympathetic murderer in Roger at this point, Yes, he's a bit of a shiftless waster, but he appears to be trying to protect his family's company from his ruthless uncle, who thinks nothing of blackmailing people to get what he wants. And Roddy McDowell is very likeable as Roger. He returns home to his aunt's where he speaks uh, where he sneaks into Quincy's lodgings typing something up before stealing Quincy's typewriter. He then gets caught by Colombo going back to Quincy's, who informs Roger that DL is missing. His Aunt Doris is the one who called Colombo in. Aunt Doris is played by Ida Lupino. Lupino was born on the 4th of February 1918, also in Hernhill, London just 10 years before McDowell, and was also a child performer due to her parents being performers. She quickly moved from the stage to film and by 1933 she was under contract for five years with Paramount before moving to Warner Brothers. She worked with Humphrey Bogart in High Sierra and in her only comedic role in Pillow to Post. She was a strong independent woman who regularly got into trouble at Warner's for refusing roles, something that was completely taboo when under contract. While on suspension she took an interest in directing and formed an independent film company with her then husband, tackling difficult subject matter. She continued to act in order to finance her directing career as well as being an early user of product placement. She then moved to direct and act for television, doing both on two different episodes of The Twilight Zone. A pioneer for women in film, this was her first 
of two appearances in Colombo. Lupino died on the 3rd of August 1995. She was 77. Much to Roger's horror, Doris was concerned because she had received a call from Dale from his car phone to her answering machine, moments before the bomb went off. He is worried the explosion or some other incriminating information will be recorded and Columbo notices him checking his watch. Luckily for Roger, the call ends just before the explosion. Columbo questions Roger, and Roger mentions in passing that his parents were killed in a freak explosion when he was younger. Oh no, they died when I was in college. It was a freak explosion at the plant. This isn't mentioned again, but there is definitely the suggestion with that line that Roger might have been responsible for their deaths, wrongly assuming he would inherit the company. At this point, it's fair to say Colombo is suspicious of Roger's behaviour, but not yet completely convinced he's a murderer, as no murder has been discovered. Colombo visits the holiday home DL was travelling to by cable car, which terrifies him as he's scared of heights, revealing yet another Colombo trait. He has a few phobias, and heights is definitely one of the big ones. While there, the crash and the bodies are discovered. Columbo suspects murder, and it's at this point in the episode he knows that Roger is the one responsible. At the wake, Doris speaks with Everett Logan, who will now take charge of the company. Logan is played by William Wyndon, who would go on to work with Lincoln Levinson as recurring character Dr. Seth Hazlitt on Murder, She Wrote, and who also appeared in the TV movie Prescription Murder. Columbo is caught in one of Roger's practical jokes while looking around his dark room, and Roger reveals he's something of a chemistry genius, which of course only makes him appear more guilty, and Columbo manages to suck Roger in by explaining there might have been a bomb in DL's car. Roger tries to throw suspicion on other employees or potential saboteurs. Columbo hints that he thinks it has something to do with cigars. Back at the office, Columbo speaks with Roger and Valerie about the cigars, and Valerie lets him know DL's cigar case has been found. This is exactly what Roger had hoped, and he is able to explain that Valerie got the cigar box from the office, and it was out in the open for anyone to tamper with. Anyone apart from Roger. Roger also makes sure that Valerie remembers that some of the boxes went to Everett Logan. This scene is a great example of when everything is going well for the murderer. However, it doesn't matter, because Columbo already has his man. Its only fault is that Roddy McDowell's attire is incredibly distracting. Not only his very 1970s shirt, but his trousers are so tight that you can tell that McDowell isn't Jewish. On inspection of Logan's cigars, there is a box missing which Roger is clearly delighted by, as this is where he took the box that he turned into a bomb. McDowell is particularly good in these scenes, playing it so casually and carefree that he's a really compelling villain. Columbo has found the note that Roger typed on Quincy's typewriter, and he believes that his efforts to throw suspicion on Logan are going perfectly. He couldn't be happier. While Columbo searches for clues in the car wreckage, Roger goes to Quincy's hideaway, where he leaves some evidence, including the typewriter. He also ensures that he is caught with fabricated evidence, 
that shows DL is apparently having an affair with Valerie, using some nude photos he took of Valerie and some the evidence that incriminates Logan. The affair is revealed in front of Doris, who blames this for DL's animosity towards Roger. Roger is now starting to act more professionally at work, setting himself up to take over the company. Doris has fired Valerie, but Roger convinces her that it's a mistake and he'll fix it. Valerie is played by Anne Francis. Francis was born September 16, 1930 in New York and is the third actor in this episode to begin as a child star, making her Broadway debut at 11. In film, she appeared in Bad Day at Black Rock, Blackboard Jungle, and is also our third Columbo actor to have been in the film Forbidden Planet, following Richard Anderson and Leslie Nielsen. She then made a move to television, where she remained a staple for decades to come including the starring role as the eponymous Honey West, as well as guest appearances in two Twilight Zone episodes, Mission Impossible, Gunsmoke, and two appearances in Columbo. Her last on-screen appearance was in Without a Trace in 2004. She died on January the 2nd, 2011. She was 80. Columbo arrives in Roger's office with Logan and tells Roger he is taking Logan up to the cabin via the cable car. Roger is reluctant to go but changes his mind when he discovers Logan is going to talk to Doris as he too has been fired based on Roger's false information. As they arrive at the cable car another officer gives Columbo a package they found at the crash site. While on the cable car, he reveals it is a damaged cigar box, so it looks like DL wasn't murdered at all. With Logan and Roger in the cable car, Columbo toys with Roger, explaining exactly what Roger did, but adding that with the discovery of the cigar box, that can't be how it all happened. He opens the cigar box, which causes Roger to start panicking as he thinks the countdown to the detonation has started. He fumbles for the cigar box as he tries to get rid of it, incriminating himself in the process, as Columbo reveals it's not the cigar box from the crash. Where did you get that, uh, that, that box of cigars, Lieutenant? Uh, from your secretary. Roger laughs manically, knowing he has been caught by a far smarter man. This is a really fun episode with a murderer who begins sympathetically attempting to save his family business from his ruthless uncle but this evaporates as the episode goes on. As it's hinted he might have also killed his parents and that he is actually just as ruthless as his uncle prepared to destroy the reputation of his girlfriend Valerie and his mentor Everett in order to take over the company as well as potentially incriminate Everett into DL's murder. He might appear as a lazy playboy and he is shown uh, when he finally gets his uncle's office but has no plans to do any work that he is lazy. But he is also hungry for power. It's again different to previous episodes in that the murder plot continues to run throughout the episode around Columbo's investigation. And it's not as clear when Columbo realises who did it. The cast are all fantastic and really good in their roles. And while the murder plot is elaborate, it's still reasonably believable. This episode has the most suitable music so far and the direction is pretty reliable. There isn't a huge amount of humour, but it's still there and it's not missed as much because the plot moves at a good pace. Columbo's solution is pretty clever, and Roger's self-inflicted downfall is really well done. 
Roger's motivation is a little unclear in places and I would have preferred it if they had expanded on the death of his parents a little more. There is very little else to criticise and I had a lot of fun with it. So I would have rated this as a 4 out of 5. Thank you. Goodbye.